I called this guy uh, about three weeks ago. He did a seller finance deal. He sold his house, 500000 to somebody. They put down eighty grand. They defaulted within six months. He gets his eighty grand. He keeps it, and he gets his house back, and he did it again to somebody else, and he'll just keep doing it over and over. If that's not the best, I mean, you're the bank. You're literally a mortgage company. Right. With, well, with we the know banking. all the all the money's in the banking system. Exactly. So that's what I'm doing now. It just I love buying real estate. You know that. Yeah. Uh, I love buying rental properties, and so I'm just able to structure my own deals. I am Josh Galindo. I've built several successful businesses utilizing the one tool everybody has, the mind. I am here to guide, coach, and prepare you. We will debate, discuss, and grow our minds together so you can obtain your own success. Fuck average, be legendary. This is my podcast. What's up, everybody? Today, we have Jason Griggs here at the Be Legendary Podcast. We're going to go over all kinds of fun things, a lot of his successes that he's personally experienced uh, from Airbnbs, having an empire here in Las Vegas and throughout the country, believe it or not. Um, Short-term, long-term rentals, uh, subject to, he's big into that right now, so listen in. Um, He is crushing that game. And then a little bit of family, a little bit of sports, and maybe some guy shit here and there. But so listen up. It'll be a good podcast. Jason Griggs. We're back. Are you back? I'm back. Oh, my gosh. This the is... last time you were on was you were holding a microphone in my <laughs> office with Crystal. Yep. Right? You remember that? Yes. Yep. Do you remember? Yeah, I do. Wow. That was that's probably three years ago. At least. A lot, a lot of good came from that. Really? Yeah. No, good. Yeah. Good. Jason is a good friend of mine. I would consider you a good friend of mine more than just a business acquaintance. Um, I respect him and you. Uh, you've accomplished a lot in the Airbnb space. Yep. Um, I think what I'm hearing, and we'll talk about today, is uh, the accomplishments that you've had in the subject to yep. space. Um, family guy. Yeah. Legitimate guy man. Now, yeah. You know, married, kids. Married, kids. Uh, so just a lot of good can come from it. But um, so let's have some fun and. Talk about anything. This is easy. Okay, let's go. So uh, tell me, let's start with the Airbnb stuff, because that's what you're kind of known for. Yeah. And it, it's so funny, because there's so much clickbait surrounding that. Like, just so many people, like, there's attention around flips, and, oh, I want to learn to flip. I want to learn to flip. Man, you dangle the Airbnb carrot out there, and I bet <laughs> you could even make that argument with the subject, too. Because we had a we had a, a class here where Jason yeah. spoke about Airbnbs. I have... I now know I have like a hundred chairs in my office. This is before we expanded because we ran out of chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, a lot I, of people came that day. So many people, bro. We were like, the conference room was full. It was crazy. But yeah, I could not believe the attention around it. That was, that was an awesome day. But you're right. It's a popular, it's a popular topic. It's a great, we'll get into it, investment. But yeah, I mean, they're doing really well. How many so, do you have now? All right. So I'm trying to catch up to you. Okay. You can't catch I, up I'm to me. To catch the up the to reason you. is, is because the Airbnb could generate twenty grand a month. Yeah, you know, my rental is a thousand so or fifteen hundred. Let's, let's backtrack a little, <laughs> right? So, I, what was this? Probably five, six years ago, you did a class. We've talked about this. I met you. Yeah, and immediately it clicked for me. I'm like, I want to be like this guy. <laughs> I have to do. You were the only person at the time talking about buying rental property, create income. Yeah. And invested in rental real estate. Yeah. And I took that to heart and I just started buying. So I'm up to 34 rentals right now. Okay. Um, I was super aggressive. Do you play any long term? I do. Okay. There's a mix. Uh, I would say 12 short term rentals okay. in total. The That's rest, fantastic. It's very good. And the rest is the mix, mid term and long term. Okay. I've expanded uh, my Kansas City. Uh, I love that market. Do you? I do. I love it a lot. But Vegas has the best rental market still. Interesting. And I feel like I've cornered a space of the short-term rental luxury market. I feel like I've really created a good brand with that, with Griggs Vacation Rentals. And now I build the biggest ones. I have the biggest ones. I'm building another big one right now. Give, give me some stats. What's a big... I mean, I, I know what they are, but the listeners yeah. don't. So what's a big So Airbnb? my big one, since we've last talked... San Gabriel. It's a 9,000 square foot mansion and we finished it and then we were lucky enough to have Dana White with the UFC reach out and he was like I want to film my reality TV show in your house. 
So cool. So surreal. Yeah. Surreal moment. Oh, I bet. Now I'm doing business with a billion dollar media company and brand that that he has a, a big part of. And Conor McGregor is staying at my house, and we're meeting him. And, and you're a, you're a you have a, a circle. I don't want to misspeak for you. You're involved in the fighting space. Yeah, I have a. So good, for you, this isn't just Dana White or no, just yeah. Conor McGregor. No, it's a, a a lot of my good friends fight in the UFC. Okay, and so they were very helpful and supportive, getting me that relationship and support. Because he asked, you know, what do you know about Jason? They were all. So supportive, and uh, yeah, we filmed. They filmed a few seasons there, and then that translated into Barstool Sports coming in for Super Bowl, and that exploded it even more. How long did they take it down for? They took it down. This has got to be a really good record. We we got about almost ninety thousand dollars for fourteen days. Oh my gosh! Yeah, in that house. Something what did they crazy. do with it? They just used it for media. Really. Crazy. Well, it's a it's an incredible social media house. It is, and maybe that's a poor term. But they uh, like I feel like there's a scene everywhere you go in that house. Like it, you could film in front of. Yeah, everything. yeah. It, it's like when I first bought it, my vision came true. I I was like, this could be the most insane real world house. Yeah, the ultimate fighter house, right. and and it became that. But the bar stool was really cool. Is it building see. notoriety? Is now it being passed around independently in these com- like in that world? I'm other- sure. I'm sure it will be as we go into the more F ones and the Super Bowls as we go. There's just no nothing like that house. Yeah, that it's secluded, nine thousand square feet, ten bedrooms. There's totally legit. Totally legit has yeah. a license on it, and it's just surreal that mm-hmm. that happened. Sure. And so I feel like I cornered that market of building luxury rental spaces here in town, and I'm just not stopping. Now I'm just continuing to build. What's and- your next smallest one? I'm just curious what the big difference is. Um, so I have my Davis Wright property, which is by the M. Is that the mob-themed one? No, oh. that was Tyler's. Oh, okay. I, I didn't do that one. Um, that's by the M. That one does about twenty to 30000 a month Crazy. consistently. Insane. Mm-hmm. Insane. Yeah, it does really well. I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I love the Henderson rental market. Because they're smart. The city's smart, and they put rules into effect. Yep. And if you would buy by the rules, you have a killer business. Sure. Now, it's hard to get in. But once you're in, it's And a, you've been it's playing this mind. game since when? I've been doing it four years full time. So what is that, 2020? Yeah. Nah, why I do I feel like you, you were on the scene? Whether it may not have been your 9,000 square foot one. I was doing my first one was three and a half years ago. My first one. Oh my goodness! Yeah, but so I've been doing had... the rentals for yeah, a long yeah. time. Well, but I think that you're you're unique and special. That you, I wouldn't say you were a pioneer because there were guys before you. Yeah. But um, before it like took off, you were kind of dabbling in it. Like you were getting the licenses when it wasn't almost impossible to get one. I think is a what lot I feel. Of... And you did all yours legit, yeah, which I, I also all... respected. Yeah, I did all of them. Legit. Not for the legitimacy part of it. I respected it like. You looked at this like this is a business. I want to yeah. be in this long term. Like you just had a different lens than like I'm just gonna throw mud at the wall and see if it sticks. Right. I think uh, to kind of go off you, we decided that there were no luxury ones, and everyone was scared to go big. Sure. And we didn't. We weren't scared. We were like, no, let's go big. Yeah, and you were like, I partnered with the right person too. I mean, I knew Tyler could get me to where I needed to be to do it. Yeah. And I was super scared of construction at the time, <laughs> but he killed it for us. He yeah. built the whole house. and He's a talented guy in the construction space. Amazing. Yeah. So he he saw my vision and a great relationship. So you got, I don't know, uh, 10 here, three in Kansas City? Oh, man, it's more. No, I, we, have, we have eight in Vegas and in Henderson, and I have... I'm up to five now in Kansas City. Uh-huh. And I got to How do you run all these? Because, dude, I have the three that I have are, thankfully, they're seasonal. Yours are year round. Yeah. Uh, I partnered with a property manager in Kansas City. Okay. And he's amazing. Tyler, uh, Tyler, I always mess up his name. I call him Shrek, but I think his name's Shrink. Uh, he's amazing. And he finds me the deals, says, J- calls me Jason, buy this house. Oh, wow. Okay. And we'll get into the creative financing stuff. But I trained him how to look for the creative financing deals that we're buying. And then he just manages it for me. And what about Vegas? Do you manage those? I manage them all myself now. Okay. Yeah, I took that over. Just over it? 
I'm not over it. I enjoy no, it. No, no, no. Uh, over, you know, paying a property manager yes, and yes, then not getting yes. the service that I your guests, that you believe your guests desire. That, and, that, and I just felt I'm just a control freak. Yeah. In a way, in a good way. Yeah. I just feel like I could do a better job than it's my oh, house. I'm sure you could. Right? Yeah. It's my house. Right. Just like you know, yeah. the stuff, you could do a better job. Yeah. And so I've been doing it. And now I'm taking on some more. So much automation. All, all automation. Yeah. I've been getting really talented at building systems and getting them to flow and run. And when it works, it's a freaking beautiful thing. That's so cool. So I run my whole business, okay? I have a, I have a partner. I have a virtual assistant, one virtual assistant, and one cleaner. Wow. Runs the entire operation. Did you bring that cleaner in-house? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that she he, could just zip her. He, it's a husband and wife. Okay. They're amazing. I don't like to give them out. No, because, I wouldn't. Um, Do not, actually. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it could get out of control. But um, they run the entire business for me uh, on, on that side. So you got that thing purring. That thing is a purring. It's a well-oiled. It's a Lamborghini. It's a Lambo. It is a Lamborghini on all fronts. It. The, it's making money, the management side. And now the education side, too. I, I could train people how to do it. Yeah. So it's great. And um, long-term debt on all that stuff? Long-term debt, DSCR loan debt. Um, so you don't have to worry about refining them? You don't no, have to worry about any of that? No. I mean, the, uh, my partner Andre down there, we have DSCR loans at 3.5%. Crazy. So we won't be refining that one. No, you won't be touching my, it. My big one has a bad rate. It has a nine per 8.5 interest rate. Okay. Okay, not the worst. Yeah. But I did some math. If I got it down to 4% down the line, I would save about 7000 a month. Wow. So right now it's cash flowing about twenty to thirty a month. But the real fund's gonna be when I when you get when I refund better interest rate climate. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think's gonna happen there? When does that happen? I don't know. I'll what, tell you what were what. your thoughts in the beginning of the year? So I knew last year I was gonna be super aggressive. I said everybody nobody's buying real estate, I'm gonna buy. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing a lot of seller financing deals and subject to deals. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're not worried about interest rates. I'm not worried about interest rates. And so I was super aggressive. I bought a good 14 houses in Love the it. past 16 to 18 months, and I just kept going. And now what's happening is people are calling me every day. Here's five deals, and I'm just scanning them every day. I'm not even doing any marketing. It's wow. just word of mouth. Yeah. Of, I'm a good buyer, legitimate buyer. And you understand the game. I understand the game. So how do you identify that? Tell me... Go walk me through one, you know, give me your medium grade deal. You know, don't give me yeah. your, your unicorn. So, you know, like, uh, please just okay. walk me through. I'll, I'll fill in if it, if I'm not, okay. if so, I don't think it's clear enough. I think seller financing real estate is the best thing in, in the entire game of all real estate. Okay. Wow. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. If you go to buy something, let's say you bought another Lamborghini. Okay. The best part about the seller financing part of it is you can create every the entire deal, sure. your terms, how much money you want to put down, the interest rate you want to pay, and how much you pay for it. Where else can you do that in anything in the world? Nothing. Right? Never. So a year and a half ago, I went on this house. I went to look at this house. Don't ask me why. I was like, this house looks really cool. Single story, huge, over a half acre backyard. And I was like, I like this house. But the interest rate is crazy. Hmm. So I called the agent, and I'm like, would your seller be interested in doing a seller finance deal on this house? And she's like, you know what? He's an old school guy. He's done this before. What are your terms? And then, boom, I just go into it's math. I want to put 10% down. I don't want to pay 8% <laughs> with the bank. I want to pay 6.5%. Could we work something out? And then two days later, boom. So I got a brand new house. I remodeled it, and that's what I live in now. Oh, that's the house you bought. That's the house I bought. No way. So now I got really good at negotiating and explaining to other agents and sellers how this works. It's perfectly legal. The guy's house is paid off. Now, instead of me paying a bank, I'm paying that seller. Mm -hmm. He's the bank. Yeah. Now he's making the forty, fifty thousand a year in, in interest, and it's a huge business. I think it's beneficial to these older folks you're describing, a lot of them don't even know what to do with, let's say they own a $400,000 house cash and you buy them out cash. That's like, they, what do they do with 400 yeah. grand? They don't have the energy to go and meet with JP Morgan yep. and, and a stockbroker or invest in, they don't have all that energy. They just want cash flow. I will never sell a house traditionally ever again. 
You'll you'll also provide. I will seller. do that. I will get. I've to heard a there's point, a huge model there. Huge model. Uh, I will never get. I will never sell a house traditionally ever again because that four hundred thousand dollar house that I'm selling, if you do the math over thirty years or twenty years, whatever it is, it's like a million dollars. Sure. So why would you sell it for four hundred? Now you're not going to get the four hundred up front. You got to wait, and that's what. Where that's I've heard what the that's a value is. is someone told me to do it recently. Go to all your tenants and ask who wants to buy the house and do seller financing on it. All of them. And what what will happen is all of the calls go away because yeah. now you're the bank. That, but the cash flow doesn't go away. That and what will happen is... And you can charge a premium for the price. So if it's $300,000 house, you can put a 10% VIG on it because you're doing the seller correct. financing. But you know the best part about what are you talking about? Hit me. I would say 75% of them will default. Yes, the other, the, other, the the next caveat yep. he said is charge rent or char- have them pay the mortgage uh, biweekly. Yeah, they won't they won't be able to sustain yeah. because they're renters. Yeah, they're not going to end up buying it. So here's a good one. So I, I called this guy uh, about three weeks ago. He did a seller finance deal. He sold his house five hundred thousand to somebody. They put down eighty grand. They defaulted within six months. He gets his eighty grand. He keeps it and he gets his house back. And he did it again to somebody else. And he'll just keep doing it over and over. <laughs> If that's not the best, I mean, you're the bank. You're literally a mortgage company. Right. With, well, with we the know banking. all the all the money's in the banking system. Exactly. So that's what I'm doing now. I just, I love buying real estate. You know that. Yeah. Uh, I love buying rental properties, and so I'm just able to structure my own deals. That's crazy. I'm able to. You just have a sense for it. How yeah. are you finding them? I would say now you see them. You can tell photos. Well, how long they've owned the house? Any criteria? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you got to know what will rent well in Las Vegas. So what rents well? Pools, single stories, good areas. Yeah. Um, but you can't get picky because not all these creative finance deals are, are rare. Sure. So I've been just going after the MLS ones, the ones that have been sitting and just offering. Like, hey, got this it. is what I'm willing to offer. And then explaining this is why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because your seller is going to actually make more money. And then once they hear that and the agents realize they're going to make money, uh-huh. they like to kind of put the deal then they together. Then they help out. Yeah. I did one seller financing deal, and it was everything you've described, It was, a, but it was a horrible time in the market, and the only way the seller could get out was to do seller financing. Yeah. I think it was like 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was totally beneficial, and I was the agent that, even though I had an understanding of real estate, I was the agent on the other side going, I don't know, I don't know. But big, huge down payment. We were able to charge a premium on the sale of the home because they wanted to do a seller financing. And then my seller got a big chunk. I got my commission. And he generated cash flow for like five years on the house afterwards because yeah. he carried the note for like five yeah. years. How long do you let these – how long do you ask to have the note carried for? As long as possible. Sure. If I what like – I would realistically- say five years is, is like the – industry average now do you watch the interest rate climate and say of now's course. the time to you of know i don't need all five let's let's pull the trigger now yeah of course so you can um, pay them off anytime you want so what's cool so the first house i ever bought my whole life okay my my old my old house you still have it i still have it. it's an airbnb now uh, that's okay awesome. it's cranking 10 10 grand a month but <laughs> I, my cousin very successful i was like i want to buy a house he's like all right i'll buy you the house okay 310 and you give me a hundred grand down, which I had, and we're gonna find it. Write a note for two ten over Sweet. fifteen years. It's a good man. Okay. Yeah. He's like, after five years, I'll give you the option if you want to refinance, five percent interest rate he gave me, or we could just continue. I'm on year like nine with the guy, <laughs> right? He's making his money. He's older. He's happy, and yeah, every year I do. I'm like, I'm just gonna keep it. Like for me to go refinance, it's annoying. So that's what's cool. You could restructure the deals. It's a good point. Too, Down whenever the road, you right? Want. You just reach out to them. So Are you the, enjoying the cash flow? Exactly. Wow, what a disservice that would have been. Because I would have been, my headspace would have been this: "Fuck, we have to refinance. We have to refinance," and not even talk to them, thinking that they only want one thing. Josh, the, the nugget ha- here is to call them. Josh, the the house that I live in now, my million dollar house. Okay, the seller is now a very good friend. We did this deal. He comes over for Thanksgiving. Wow. He texts me once a month to check in, how's the kids? And I just texted him. I said, look, we, we have a two-year term. Can, can we continue? The rates haven't moved. He understands. He's like, all right, let me think about it. I'll get, I'll get back to you. That's what's so cool about it. The creative part sure. is you can literally move the chess pieces in your favor <laughs> however you want. And so that's what I've been doing. 
You gotta be in love with this. I'm obsessed. That's so. Cool. I am totally obsessed. And sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. And you don't need a lot of income. You don't need. Well, anything. you don't need income to op- to justify the loan. You don't need good loan. credit score. Yeah. You don't need income. You just need to be able to structure the deals well in Shit. your favor. You may have. You may have gotten me a like little I, bit. Yeah, a I'm little bit. You. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll get you right now. I bought a house. I bought a house last week for twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> What's it cash yeah. for? Yeah. Two hundred bucks. That's yep. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. insane. People are buying four hundred thousand dollars houses yep. at cash flow two hundred bucks. Yep. And so what's happening in the market? People are buying. It has a higher interest rate, five seven five, I think, and they can't afford it. They they get the solar on it, yeah. the water system, yeah. right? Yeah, twenty one hundred bucks a month. They can't afford it. Now the guy doesn't have any equity in it. Doesn't he has a little bit, not a lot. And if he were to go sell this traditionally. He's upside down. Yep. He's going to have to write a check to sell this house. Yeah. So this is the better option where I pay him some money to, he deeds me over. This is a subject to transaction. He deeds me over the property and we leave the mortgage in his name. Now, how do you get around the bank calling the note due? Yeah, it's, it happened to me. It's happened it did. to me four times now. See, I thought, tell me, if, I still want you to answer it five, four times. Yeah. Could you have made, let's say the seller is John Smith. Mm-hmm. Could you have created an LLC, John Smith LLC? Yeah, some and people then, do that. DBA the LLC off yeah. and then they would have never known. My trick is so if we buy a house on Main Street, okay, I name the LLC after that street. Got it. So, they so it's not Jason Griggs, it's even not though it's Griggs probably not how you take group, yeah. right, okay. LLC. So yeah, I my my one in Gulfport, Mississippi just got just got called. How much do you own that one? So I bought that or house. Or actually what did you buy it for? Okay, so I bought because I had some houses out there. Okay. I bought it for seven thousand dollars. So it was a subject <laughs> to deal. Okay. That house in two years appreciated almost $170,000. Okay, so I paid seven thousand. I, I just went through the math of it. Seven thousand appreciated one hundred seventy thousand. So it got called. I don't know how it got called because the Did way you it do gets your called, trick with the street name and everything. That one I didn't. Okay, that one I didn't do it. Um, anyway, I had so much equity I could re- I refinanced it, but I went from a two point something uh. to seven. Which but is pulled annoying. out a hundred and something thousand. Yeah, but I took money out. Yeah, we took out fifty thousand wow. on that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, we took some money out. I had some houses out there. It, it, do you like that market? I had. Or was that just an I opportunity have, there? I was just an opportunity. <clears throat> I always give. I give it a shot because I get deals sent to me for all over the country. Sure. So I get a deal in let's just call it uh, Louisiana. You got to do your research. You call the four property managers. What's the market like? Will it cash flow? But we knew that one was good because it would cash flow right away. So I'm looking for rental ready homes, no fixer uppers. Yeah, over across state lines, I'm not a fan of. No, I, I've, I, this guy caught me on social, learned my lesson. Uh, calls it a sob story. I knew him from Vegas. He had actually helped me learn the flipping business in the early, 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 early days, and had moved to Texas. Solicits me to back them to start flipping. I go out there by my Sprinter, kind of kill two birds, one stone, yeah. drive them around in the Sprinter. I gave them the whole VIP experience, taught them all my systems, and dude, he ends up living off of my rehab money the whole time and then tells me the house is done. Bro, this house is like 50% done. Yeah. He never even turned on the water. Yeah. I'm like, how the hell did you fucking clean the place? Like, I, I didn't even know how he pulled off what he did with no water. Oh my God. Anyway, and then I had to go hire another guy, find guys, Right. To rehab, and then I just made a commitment. I was like, and all my out of state stuff that I that, that are long term, if they need any work, I'm like basic, basic, like baseboards, paint, carpet, like no major reno- right. renovations. I think you got to trust. You got to have some trust. Like my Kansas City guy, I fully trust. So I fully and I do him. with my St. Joe guys. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm kind of exaggerating my thought process. Uh, I'm moving closer to where I can trust them. We just bought one where it needed like eight thousand dollars, so not much. Right. But um, where I'm like, yeah, I, I have faith that you'll be able to pull it off. But other than, I, I think that's slow and steady. I think every property manager they they promise you the dream, right? And then I, I'm just realistic. I'm like, all right, I'll take what you tell me, and then I'm yeah. minus some, yeah. and, and I know that's the real number, right? But th- with these creative deals, you're getting lower interest rates, so it's such a safer bet, and that's. And I'll very little cash it. out. It sounds like it's you're very not putting. Cash, what's yeah. the most money you've put down on a subject to? Um, great question. So, like on my personal house, even a rough I put note. Junk. Well, all okay. right. So, like not I, that I, one. That's I a bad just, example. I brought in a partner, uh, my buddy Andrew, and we did because he was like, I really want to do one, and I explained it all to him, and we did. He put down forty k, 
Okay, that was that was a good chunk on this one. It's a brand new house in water water cooler yeah, oh, north on Luce, Lucy. It's all the way north. Brand new community. Okay, so I go on this appointment. Uh, lady's like, I can't afford this anymore. She's like, This is my equity. We worked out a deal. I gave her forty thousand. She deeded me over the house. As we're leaving, as I'm leaving, I'm like, Okay, I'm like, When you take all your stuff out, just can you do it this way? And she's like, No, no, no. I- I'm leaving everything. <laughs> Josh, it was forty thousand dollars of furniture sure, in this freaking I bet. brand new townhome. So I'm like, okay, boom. Now I could Airbnb this thing, and now this thing's cash flowing almost two thousand dollars a month. Wow. So he'll make his, we'll make our investment back, boom, and there's equity in it already. It's See, crazy. I was always under the misconception that uh, DJ having put down like eighty, hundred grand. Yeah, on because those days. people, I'm gonna yell at Sean Bob. They don't know how to structure it the right way. Because that's what that's how they're getting sent to me. They don't. They there don't. you go. And, and then they and throw so on at an first insane glance. assignment. Oh, sure, right, that right. Too. They throw the in, insane assignment on it. Um, I've been really, I've been doing really strong in renegotiating from the wholesaler and just allowing me to go on these appointments because a lot of these guys don't understand. Just get out of the way. Yeah, just get out of the way. I'll yeah. give you a few grand here, right? Do you want the few grand or you're not going to get anything? But you can't charge investors eighty to one hundred thousand dollars for a four hundred thousand dollars house. It's just not. No, the interest rate dismissed. isn't attractive enough to me right. to make sense of the numbers that they're wanting me to put down. No, no. But if I showed you your deals, done, but you telling me forty thousand the most. Yeah, I don't. Really I thought you were tell me eighty. On. No, we did. But I, I've I've done ones for like two grand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's like it's crazy. But I just get these opportunities where it, it's it's a sad uh, the analogy I use. You ever see uh, what's the um, the movie with the mortgage crisis? Uh, I know it. Um, Which I just watched it. The great something. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Wait, come on. The Big Short. The Big Short. The Big Short. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the Great. The Big Short. <laughs> the part where he's going around to the people in Florida and they're like. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, that's what it is. These people just are, they're stuck. Well, and I don't think it's a, I think you're a service that is oh, a tremendous value. Josh, it, it's a huge service. Because you start paying their mortgage. So now they rebuild their credit. They could they have the they ability save to, their credit. And they've had 10 real estate agents through the door already. Yeah. And none of them know what to do. They're all like, okay, you're going to have to pay 30 grand to sell this house. And the person's like, well, I don't have any money. So what am I supposed to do? And they're like, crap. We're kind of, right. that's it. Yeah, there's no see, money in this, it. Right, this, see you later. Yeah. And so a lot of these times, it's emotional. You know, these people are very thankful that I know how to do this. Right. Thank God. And so it, it's just a win-win. That's the best way I could put it. It's a win-win. It's, it's you're helping them move on. They don't want to be here anymore, and that's it. I wish we could take all of our knowledge and put it in a little box and just market the crap out of it. I'm tell, I'll teach you. There'd be, there'd be nobody better. I, I think... If if I we should do another class, and I could train some agents how to how to find them, at least how to you know what I would love about that class is just the the, the education. I don't need anybody to go find them. My agents, my traditional agents, because yeah. I don't know if you know we're up to like 170 agents. Well, now. so I, I'll keep going. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna d- go d- off. It's that. quick. Um, just so that they if they do experience this they know how to at least navigate it properly. Yes. It's when they have no fucking clue, right. dive into it, and it's a bomb. Yep. So that's where I think the value would be. And if they want to take advantage of finding deals or bringing you deals and making a few bucks, then that's Well, a so win you too. have 170 agents, correct, right? So you're going to have agents who are going on appointments with upside-down equity or level equity, what I call it, and they're not going to know what to do. No. They have no idea. Yeah. And, and they've never done it. This is a high-level trend. These are high. They're harder transactions. And so getting those people, and that's what I'm doing now, training these agents, if, if you see this, that you need to call me and, yeah because it's a win-win you're still going to represent your client and what's cool is you could also represent me you could double on the deal and we could all make money and my goal is always to buy re- the real estate i pause there on purpose because that's a good cliff and i <laughs> i want to make sure there's a good gap <laughs> that'll be that'll be money um yeah i think that'd be a good idea let's set that up okay like 100 percent. i so, think that'd be so good so uh okay are you doing any fix and flip I am. I'm. I'm doing. I just. I just finished one. I got a full price offer yesterday on it. Congratulations. So Andre, I got to give a shout. Out. Andre really taught me a lot. He really gave me the keys to the castle. Mm-hmm. And so did Jadian. She's. She helped me too. 
Um, I w- wasn't really a big flipper guy, but you know, I have my retail side too. But learn from you. You got to flip to make cash to buy more real estate. That's so it. That's what we. That's we ran. We've been running some Google ads, and they've been working for off market. Yeah, off market. Yeah. What brokerage are you at now? Simply. Simply. Yeah. I was gonna say where was Chockets? Yeah, Chockets. Ch- Chockets is the best, man. Yeah, that guy's a, a machine. He. he, he, he I was, you know, so something I always make note of is why is the podcast called, it used to be called Fuck Average, Be Legendary, but we changed it to Be Legendary because the Fuck Average is a little strong. The people that we're having on here is just people that are living a legendary life. Yeah. And I think um, people can have uh, a misunderstanding of what legendary is. They think it's like this huge grand thing and I have yachts and planes and penthouses in New York and it doesn't. It's like there's a traditional life that exists that the masses participate yep. in. And then there's a few folks in the world that are living a life that's unique to that. And to me, that's just, that's legendary. hundred percent. It, it's a legendary lifestyle and hearing everything that you've described, um, about yourself that I already knew, um, is why I wanted to have another podcast with you. I appreciate is, it. Is it's a legendary life. Like it, when you look back, your kids aren't going to go, you know, and there's nothing wrong with the average Joe. <laughs> I always say we need garbage men we need electricians. Yep. We need, we need all of that for society to run, but um, and they'll see their dads in a different legendary light. You know, my dad worked his ass off mm-hmm. to provide for my provide for me and my family, and you know, I think that always translates naturally from a father to a son. But I think uh, living a legendary life is a little bit more of a uh, I don't know a flash bang experience in the eyes of your children. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I was brought up by two both my parents were teachers. Okay, and. My mom would always say, you're going to be a gym teacher because then you get summers off. <laughs> right? right? She still doesn't believe me that, like, the success <laughs> I've had. She's like, well, I don't know why you wouldn't be a teacher. So wow. what's cool for me is I'm from a place where there's a lot of blue-collar workers. My friends have to drive two hours to work in Brooklyn, New York, Oof. or New York City, and then drive home two hours home every single day. For not a lot of money. That's okay? insane. Sixty to eighty thousand dollars in New York. I quickly realized I wasn't doing that. Uh, really I'm not either. doing that. I really like the entrepreneurial life of I get to do whatever I want when I want to do it. But the 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 flip side to that is you're just a wired maniac. It's twenty four seven. Yeah. The best clip that I saw of you, <laughs> dude. You're like I put my phone on airplane mode <laughs> and I and I opened it with three hundred fifty seven yeah. messages. I could relate to that oh, I bet. more than anyone. <laughs> hey, Jason, you got five minutes to talk about the whole Airbnb business? Right. Can you teach me the whole Airbnb? That's what I no. love. It's like five uh, minutes. Yeah. Do you think do you think I learned this in five minutes? I'd be yeah. a billionaire. Right. Or the guy who taught me for five right. minutes would be a billionaire. Yeah, people just don't understand the, the back end of it. The There's so much feel and experience and energy and vibe. And like I, I struggle to articulate what is happening in my brain when I'm comping to people to make sense of stuff. Like it's all a feeling that's like taking place. It's an algorithm that my brain has created that is so hard to put on paper and try to explain it. It's so hard. Yeah, so five minutes wouldn't wouldn't cut it. No. (laughs) I what I'm I've learned a lot from you. I've I've sang in my house, by the way. I tell my wife this. I would say probably like once every two months. I gotta do what Josh is doing. (laughs) (laughs) I gotta do what Josh is doing. But what I've learned from is is leveraging other people. And you need you need you can't do it yourself. Yeah, you need to leverage other people and work together and build for the bigger cause. And that's what I've been trying to build. Of like, if people want to learn real estate, let's go. Let's let's dive into that a little bit okay. because I was lucky enough to not have to do that. But I think it was luck and timing. And a lot of people will say so. There was two components. I did tap into an investor for my flipping business. But let's just talk about rentals for a second. Um. A lot of folks now are saying, well, I can't make anything pencil. I can't buy anything. Um, I, where do you get money? Because you're not buying a $100,000 house anymore. You know, yeah, like yeah. when I first started buying mm-hmm. rentals, you're buying $300,000 house or $280,000 or four hundred, whatever the number is. So, yeah, you do need that. And you navigated this new climate, not the climate where I initially started from, um, beautifully by joining up with folks. I, yes. I hear that all the yes. time with you. Oh, and I'm like, what? what uh, that guy too. I'm like, yep. damn, Jason, you're fucking talking to yeah. everybody. Yeah, no, that's it's such a great point. And my wife brings this up. She's like, you need to talk more about this. Where partnerships shouldn't be scary. And there's a there's a negative stigma, especially in Vegas. Sure. Okay. I love partnering with people. 
I really do. I, I have great partners. And my upfrontness about the business is you're going to just let me do my thing. There you go. Let me do. I'm going to find the deal and I'm going to manage it. Every dollar is going to be in our joint bank account. I'm not going to hide anything. And you're going to sit back and just chill. <laughs> and, and like, if there's not a better partnership than that, I, I don't know what is. But like people like Andre and Tyler, they're great. Like they, they rehab the house for me. And if the things go wrong, they help me on that front. They're better in, constru in construction than I am. But I love partnering with people. Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. I met, um, I, I went to this UFC fight. Do you know Derek Fay? Do you follow him? No. Monster. Absolute beast. But I sat next to him. In what space? Fight. Everything. M monster entrepreneur. Okay. Monster. At the highest you could go. A gazillionaire. And I was like, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing. Just five minutes. I was like, I'm buying these houses. He's like, you need more por money partners. That's all you need. Wow. And stop putting your own money in. And then he's like, you should never buy another house with your own money ever again. And I'm like, no one's going to put the money in. I swear. <laughs> I, I, he's like, try. A month later, boom. People are lining boom. up to give you money. Line it up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at up. this spot now where I'm like, do I leverage more of what I've got? Or do and because you start hearing the real entrepreneurs, the real, not real, then we're not not real, the more successful versions of ourselves, um, and these guys, man, they they fucking have leverage to the moon. Yeah. I think they do or they don't. They, no, you're right. Oh. I don't like that. I don't know. And you know why I don't? I think because I think we're there. Just like, let's just look at ourselves. You know, five years ago. If if I'd have been like you should have thirty Airbnb or thirty rentals, you go oh well, 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 I'm 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 comfortable with one. Let me just go with one. Yep. Like right now, here's thirty. Yeah, right. You know, and you got to buy them all. Yeah. You would be like, nah, just one. So my point in saying that is, and just like with me, you know, the first time I flipped, it was like uh, more than two. Let me just, you know, now I can take on a bunch. I wonder if as we get better in business and understanding the leverage space and understanding. I'm not even claiming this. I'm just speculating on why these guys think this way. Once they understand that world so much better, they're so much more precise and they can feel more comfortable taking that kind of debt on. Yeah. Just like when I take on a hundred thousand dollar debt, or let's just say it's a hundred thousand. I don't even blink at it. Yeah. You know, I, well that took time and, and an understanding of the world and, and the business world. So I wonder if we'll get to a point where we'll become so comfortable with debt and use it like these hedge fund guys or these uh big investor guys do i think there's two I, i'm very anti-debt uh, we're we yeah kind of we're both similar. the same like, way yeah um that's why i'm having this debate in my head i'm hearing it yeah. out there going like am i doing it wrong right no I, I don't think we're doing it wrong i like to pay my houses off i, I really because if even you with low low rate low yeah, rates yeah you I, pay more than you have to yeah on, a, on almost all no my houses. Way. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, I don't do yeah. that. Uh, you don't so do you're that. even more anti debt yeah, than I am. Yeah, I'm just anti debt because I want to get to a point, I'm not there yet, where I have so much money coming in that's guaranteed. I'm not there yet. Not built on a house of cards. Okay. That's that, my argument. Yes. Okay. Now, because yes, all that leverage shit, but it's all built on a house of cards. Yes. Like you take these casinos down to, you know, if the bar doesn't sell enough tequila <laughs> that night, then that bar space can't pay its rent. And then you take, it can't, you know, and then yep. it goes to the building and then it goes to the, I mean, dude, that's a whole house of cards. Exactly. That's why I like the no debt space. You know, I'm like back on my, on my side of the fence. Like I don't need, I don't need to go to bed at night knowing that I owe $15 million in, in mortgage loans. Right. I like going to bed knowing that I have almost seven houses paid off. That's gonna get me to my goal of a hundred grand net a month, where I can retire. Is that your number? Yeah, that's my number too. Yeah, hundred grand net a month. Triple net, no bullshit, no, no bullshit. smoke and mirrors no after doing everything. Anything. <laughs> yeah, and not having to get out of bed. Not getting out of bed. Not what does anything. that look like for you? Because I'm, I wouldn't say I'm. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty close. I'm, I don't, I don't know what close means in the eyes of every listening. I'm, I'm making my way near that number, and it's starting to make me think about like. How do you shut the, how do you, what does it look like? Do you actually shut the thing down? You know, not, 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 you know, like, uh, you know, I have my different facets, I guess, you know, I have social media that I have to keep relevant to maintain the brands, yep, yep. you know, all that, that, all of that, um, employees, uh, the brokerage, my flipping business and my rentals. Let's say right now I have a hundred grand a month. What does 
you just let this thing fizzle or do you, or is it self-sustaining yeah. and it just keeps yeah. going? Or do you go, I, or I do you think- go and hire a guy for 10 grand a month and go, you're in charge of all of these companies. Yeah. Or twenty grand a month is probably the real it's a good number. position to be in. It is, it's but a, what does that look like for know. you? Or for me, what I, would you say look like for me? Uh, or um, wh- this number, we have this number, yeah, but what does number. it fucking look like after? I think it's just a comfortable number, and I think it's good to have a goal, right? A hundred percent. We can start there. Right, I we support start a goal. Yeah. sports guys. Yeah. Right? I, I, this is my goal. Yeah. Okay, just like I want to bench press this. You're gonna work up to it. Yep. I, I just feel like that's a comfortable number for me. But nothing buy, changes. Nothing changes. I mean, you could I have everything I've ever wanted and more. Right? You know what I think about the hundred thousand? Because you said you said buy and then I cut you off. But I think if you're worth 150 million with no cash flow, and I'm making a hundred thousand dollars a month, and I have and I'm worth zero, we could do the exact same 100%. shit. The only thing I can't do is buy a jet, <laughs> but I can rent a jet, right? A hundred grand a month, yeah. bro. We could be like, yeah, twenty thousand to California for yeah. a Lakers game or something. Yeah, eh. I don't need that. No, I'm just saying we can live yeah, that crazy off a hundred grand a month. I think it's equivalent to being worth a hundred million dollars outside of being able to actually own these things, which a lot of the headache comes from owning shit. Yeah. You're better off renting it. But I've, the headache for me on running the rent, I enjoy it. I feel like I'm really good at it. I feel like there's no one better than me in this space in Vegas of I running, of it. running rental properties as a whole different with short term, midterm, long term. So I don't, I don't, that doesn't bother me. I don't think I'll get burned down from that. I do think the the grind of the other stuff, the finding the deals and dealing with clients when you're making a hundred grand a month, like do you want to <laughs> freaking take somebody to look at a house? <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, but I enjoy coaching. I enjoy teaching. I have a little team now that I'm I'm training. I really love that part of it. But I was explaining to my to my wife Sammy the other day. I'm like, look, we bought this house. It's almost paid off. It's bringing in about ten eight to ten thousand a month as an Airbnb. Okay, a retired fireman. In, in the place we live in, they're going to retire or a cop and they're going to make six grand a month the rest of their life. Yeah. Like that light bulb is like, yeah. wow. Yeah. How powerful yeah. one yeah. $310,000 house yeah. is where I, I have only owned it for nine years. Right. Versus this poor friend of mine who had to put 25 years of hard work getting shot at every single day in Manhattan. There's an easier way. Yeah. There's That's a beautiful way. statement. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of perspective. Uh, I slowed down in, over the last five weeks, over the last five weeks, and uh, just because it was only like two months ago that I moved the flipping business to all the people I just described, and uh, I was like counting the days because what what I was realizing is each time I tried to hand it to them and I was still involved, I was reinjecting myself, and then it was creating confusion for them. Because they want to empower, they want to be empowered, they want mm-hmm. to feel the power of being able to make decisions, but then they're second guessing themselves because I'm there. So it's like, I'm gonna take charge and do this, but Josh, would you have done that too? And that was creating a, 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 a delusion, it was diluting their power. Yep. So I had to say, okay, and, and this is like a full family conversation, which is just my wife. <laughs> um, honey, I'm going to hand it over. And I was like, keep me off the ledge for like, because this is going to be a daily. Bro, I've been flipping houses since I know. fucking 2008, you know? So you're giving away a baby. Yeah. Letting them go. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So I had, it was, it was conscious is my point. Anyway, so once that happened, a huge gap of time came into my life. Okay. And then I didn't know what to do with time. <laughs> so then I shoved a fucking ton of dumb shit into the time and then didn't find any fulfillment in that space. I was going to do the whole uh, coaching and formal uh, formalizing it all. I love teaching. I love sharing information. I wish so. I wish you would go build it and have a tab that just says hire Josh too. Yeah. And you get a you know fifty percent right. of my action, and you just call and go, Josh, come talk to this group. Yep. To me, I would love that. I'd feel so fulfilled. But building the whole thing and all the other stuff is not where I'm at. Anyway, my whole point was is in that period of slowing down, I had to. I kind of looked around. And it was like, whoa, like, dude, you've done a lot in yeah. a short time. And I was going so fast, Jason, just a few weeks prior to that moment that I was like, I didn't even, I didn't even stop and it sounds so cheesy, stop and smell the roses. I was like blind to it all blind. Yeah. I was like, I need more. I got to go harder. <laughs> I can make everything go harder. I'm I can push way. harder. I can. 
And uh, so that little moment you just described, um, I'm, I felt like for the first time, honestly, because I don't believe in wins. Um, I, I used to, the problem was, is I would, I would have a, a success in my life and then I would celebrate it. And then God would put my teeth on the curb and kick the back of my head. So I made like a commitment to myself that I would just not celebrate anymore. It's just part of the life. Yeah. It was just part of the game. Yeah. yeah. And just win on your own, you know, or call that success more than winning. Um, but I think I'm going to reverse some of that stuff and, and humbly, uh, bask in some more of my wins to just have a little perspective. Yeah, you should. I, I think the most impressive thing for me is uh, now that I'm a dad of two, like how do you do this all with four kids? <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking, how old are your kids again? Uh, eight weeks and, uh, two and a half. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're new. <laughs> Bro, let me, and that's the other thing that's, 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 slowly pushing into you know you only have so much bandwidth and it's at, at at eight weeks and two and a half years old dude they take up and I hate i don't you know however you receive this information they t they're taking up five percent of the bandwidth you know in your world it may feel like 50 yeah. you know but someone that's been there th th that's about five percent of what my bandwidth was at that at those ages i have a 10 an eight i have a 10 a nine <laughs> I have an 11. They all just changed. <laughs> 11, 9, 7, and 5. Bro, they are at the peak of their, Dad, look at this. Let me show you this. Come watch this. You know, uh, all in club soccer and everything. And so, you know, I look at my 11-year-old, and I'm like, in five years, he's 17. Excuse me, 16. Um you know, what were you at 16? I loved my mom. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't have a dad, but I loved my mom. I loved the shit out of her, but I didn't. You know, I wanted to hang out with my friends. I wanted to hang out with my girlfriend. I wanted to go play sports. I wanted to... My mom wasn't my focus. You know what I'm right. saying? So if you take 10 years, taking it all the way down to my five-year-old, in 10 years, which you and I know blows by, uh, dude, they're fucking... That do, chapter's do over. Do you see them get uh, getting into this business? <sighs> would would you I put see? them... Would you put them... I would not force them. No. Yeah. But I will heavily guide them. I'm not a believer. I love that we're going into this topic, um, the parenting and kid thing. Yeah. I'm not a believer in uh, letting your kids, if you have superior information, is what I would say. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if I was raised by two teachers, um, uh, I wouldn't make the same advice. But I think that we're unique, special humans that have experienced more. And, and I think we're entitled to be able to inject our opinions on our children. Now, I'm not going to control them because that would backfire and they may not speak to me. So I know that there's a consequence to that. But I would highly um, encourage them to explore their maximum potential, I guess, put it that way. That's and if, totally and, fair. And if they say, I wanted to try your housing business, Dad, I would go, great, let's put all of it into that. You know, if they go, I want to be a professional chess player, I'd be like, great, let's put it all into that. You know, but if they were like, I want to, you know, uh, be a social worker. I would probably discourage that and figure out another way. Cause I watched some of Crystal's girlfriends growing up. I found this a really fascinating observation. A lot of Crystal's Crystal, uh, uh, never got into the cocktailing space. She was beautiful enough to do it for whatever reason, her life never took her there. So she never got stolen by the industry from 21 to 30. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then her best friend was a beautiful girl also, uh, could have been enticed to get into that space, but her parents said, how much money do you need to live like all of your girlfriends that are making 80000 a year at the club uh, if you go and get a job at Wynn? Yeah. And she did. She was in the executive space at Wynn, uh, behind the scenes, and she was making like $42,000 a year. So they're like, we'll, get, we'll subsidize your income with another thirty, so you don't feel like you have to go off and be in the industry to live an abundant life. Got it. But it allows you to get this experience as an executive at 21. So I would do something like that. Like I would subsidize some of their income until they start to find their spark versus like the parent that's like, nope, figure it out because your kid's going to take the path of least resistance. They're not going to take the yeah. path of most resistance. And the least resistance will be where the quickest money is. And usually the quickest money is the, the short termist amount of money. Yep. You know, that was kind of a long winded answer, <laughs> but um, how do I do four kids? My wife is a humongous part of that game. See that. Huge. You know, I have my life broken into my assistant. That's why an assistant's so imperative for me. Handles everything uh, scheduling-wise uh, during business hours. And then my wife 
is everything after business hours. So like if you and I want to get a beer after work, that's like no big deal. But if we wanted to schedule a golf date uh, on a Saturday at noon, I'd literally, you know, figure it out with you, screenshot it to Crystal, she'd give approval, and then I'd give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> An approval wow. in the sense of does it fit right, into our schedule. Right, yeah. so I get because it. you got to, you know, be t- on the weekends, bro, my day could start at, at 7 a.m. waking up, uh, first game's at 8, and we'll have 12 soccer games until 9, 8.45 at night. You're in the thick of the, the I'm sports. I'm in the thick of it. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, And that's what my point is, is, is while you don't, while your bandwidth, well, it may not be your perspective at the moment, is being used in the capacity that it is, dude, get as much as you can. Like, go out there and generate as much cash flow. Buy as many homes as you can. Build your brand beautifully. Do everything you're already doing, but just really, I'm giving you, like, advices. Yeah. You know, I'm, we're only five years apart. I don't know, what, right. 30, what? 36. Yeah, so we're not much apart, but, you know, life experience. Um, because when the kids are fucking seven years old, eight years old, and you and did they be crushed if I didn't go to one of their games? So Crushed. Let's, let's get into that. So I coached for a very long time, and I had a give that up to be a dad and what i realized coaching for 14 years here was i got to see a lot of parenting Mm. i got to see a lot of parenting in this town a lot a lot parenting hundreds of parents every year recycled i saw amazing parents and i saw awful parents and i saw some kind of in between i'll take something from this person and that person and whatnot but i to touch on that point of not going to your kids games I will never miss. Like, <laughs> I'm a psycho when it comes to sports, and I can't. That's what I'm really looking forward to of being able to go to every single practice yeah. and every single game. And real estate does that. Yeah, you could make money by yeah. coaching your kids' soccer team or baseball, whatever it is. That's that's what I'm really looking forward to. What was the sport? Lacrosse. The, lacrosse. Are the yeah. kids playing that, or do they find he, their own so sport they like? My my guy's young. He's only two and a half. He could play whatever he wants, but I just know Oh, lacrosse. I'm sorry. I keep assuming your kids are, like, comparable no, age. No, yeah, two no. and a half. Two I mean, half. shit. He's, he's, he's two and a half. He's probably not doing anything. I, I'm excited, sorry. honestly. I'm excited <laughs> about the hockey. Yeah, hockey? I'm, I played hockey. Yeah. I, I loved hockey. And hockey's popular now here. Yep. So I'm excited about that. We'll put them on skates. You can get the little ones in there. Yeah, it's I great. mean, they, they start, yeah, they she, start. They wouldn't let me sign up. I tried lying on the waiver and everything. <laughs> they really caught me, man. Um I just think parents are very unrealistic with their kids with sports. That was the big thing. And they, there really wasn't a lot of good parenting as they got older where uh, kids buy into coaches. They really do. Kids buy into what the coaches structure. As soon as they get in that car and go home, it goes away. The parent really retracts that from the coach. Okay. So if you're telling not your kid, me, I'm a big supporter of our coach. You have to. Yeah. Right? If it our is. coach tells Beckham to run uh, and he comes in the car crying, I'm like, I remember the first time I disrespected my coach. Yeah. I ran. But the stuff, uh, the <laughs> stuff that I'm teaching, a lot of parents is, I'm like, I think college is a good thing. I really do. I think college is a good thing if if your kid's good at a sport and wants to continue to play. There's no negative to that, in my opinion. Sure. Find the school that's affordable. Let him keep playing. I got a lot of pushback from parents. Well, it's a waste of time. It's stupid. It, I, I disagree. Why is it stupid? How's the kid's talented. Dude. Right. Well, he can't become a professional lacrosse player. That's their own lens. So what? <laughs> right. So he what? enjoys yeah. to play. Yeah. And he's good. Yeah. Let him play. Yeah. Who cares? Let him play. <laughs> that's it. I, I would go out of parents all the time. But, yeah, I, I learned a lot from coaching. I really did. And that's helped me propel real estate and tell me become a better parent. Too. I bet. I bet it's going to have a big impact on Huge, it. huge. Yeah. I mean, I And all the different it. kids you get to witness and the response, to, you, you know, witnessing interaction. You know, yeah. parent, child. What did he say? How do you respond? Ooh, that was good. Ooh, that was really good. I'll apply that in my life. Or that I, was really bad. I won't apply that. I think it's special when... I have such good relationships with some of my players. Some some of them better relationships they have with their own parents. Sure. And it's special. Yeah. It's a really special thing because you see what the parent's doing and you realize the parent is just not all there. It just doesn't get it. Mm. A lot of time they just don't get it. Yeah. Just being respectful. Like you just you're not getting it. You're mm-hmm. not seeing it the way I'm seeing it. And the kid likes that the coach supports them. I'm like, hey, like this is this is you're doing the right thing instead of getting told no all the time. Yeah. 
but yeah, a lot of the parents because four kids. I'm I'm sure you're in the thick of it with the, well, the travel. I, but what you just described is is spot on that with how many you witnessed. And I'm just taking my screenshot in time times four kids uh, times fifteen kids a team times a parent or two per kid. Yeah, you've seen it all. Seen it all. And I, you know, I I'm, can't even. I can't even. I could write a book. Yeah, I could write a book about it. And it, it gets to a point where it's like. It's demanding of these people. They have no respect no. for your dad. <laughs> it's insane, bro. It's insane. I can't even be in the chats. <laughs> Dude, the chats are nuts. That's I told Crystal, I'm like, I can't be in these. This no. is they're, they're like, how do these guys, how can they start a text block at two in the afternoon? Do they not have jobs? <laughs> like, what are they doing at two or at nine at night? Like, you think the coach is going to respond? It's like, but you know what that is, right? This entitlement. Is that and parents live through their kids. Yes. Hundred percent. They live through their kids. Yep. It's a sickness. Yeah. It's a disease. It, it really uh, is. Yeah. It, it's I wasn't good or I didn't play. My kids owe this, and I'm gonna be him right. through your own through kid. through them. I promise myself, and I promise my wife, I'll never do that. No, I don't think it's healthy. No, you, it's not a healthy thing. You just let him play. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a <laughs> just our, let him play. My Beckham, he's he's good. He's not on the best team. Uh, out of the club teams to be on i'm like i don't give it but some parents will pull their kids and force them on the better team and then they sit the bench yeah. i'm like i just want to watch beckham play <laughs> and if he's confident and happy and he's building relationships and learning how to lead and listen and take direction and that's the thing they forget what sports is really about 100%. it's way more than becoming pro one day yep. it's and then these heli i mean man i could go on well, yeah. these helicopter parents that come in then they're stripping the whole part yeah, of the yeah. value of <laughs> yeah. sports like to me, I, that's where I learned respect and I learned authority. I learned all that from sports. 100%. You know, Jason, this was amazing. Yep. Um, super talented guy. Uh, congratulations on all your success. I appreciate it. Always um, a pleasure. Let's set up that class. Let's I will. I will. What? Where can everybody find the Jason Griggs? Instagram <laughs> at Griggs Real Estate. Anything else you want to drop? I want to give a shout out to okay. someone. Okay. Okay. To Jadian. Jadian Longo. She bought her first rental, she told me, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. We, can I tell the story quick yeah. of Jadian? Yeah. So Jadian is my one success. <laughs> I think I had 20 people come to me. I want to get my real estate license. I'm like, all right, do this, this, this. She did it. She came to me. She's uh, she's like, I'm ready to go. I'm like, I, I can't, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to train you the right way. She came over here, and now she runs your entire flipping business. Is that right? Yep. Uh, I'm going to, one, I double the shout out, but two, I, I want to, I believe because of the time I've spent with JD and, and just hearing what you just said there in the short, uh, in the beginning of what you described, JD skill where so many lack is you tell her to do this and she does that. <laughs> no, no. She does exactly what you said. Yep. And then she shortens the learning curve. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These boneheads, this, they, they, I, you know how many people have come to me and said, I want to learn how to run a flipping business and can't do it. They can't do it. And I'm like, bro, I'm an example of it. You know what I'm saying? Like you told her, do this, 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 and this. Yep. She went and did yep. it. It created a, a result for her, a positive result. Now she's with me. I've told her, so we didn't talk about this before. You know, I told JD, do this, 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 and this. She goes and does it and creates a positive result. And how old is she? Oh, she 22, 23. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Dude, I'll, I'll roll up to her with a house at a house with a, with a seller for like customizing a house or something. And you know, a lot of that's about building confidence very quickly. And so that's the only reason I show face on those is to, you know, I'm Josh Galindo, Galindo Group Real Estate, yeah. the whole thing. And then JD will kick in and fire off, and they're so impressed and they're so uh, happy and they're feeling the confidence that comes from her. And I'm like, like on the side or something, I won't call it out in, first, in, person, in, in front of JD. And, I'm like, and she's only 22. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> impressive. Shout yeah. out, JD. Yes. Kicking butt. All right, my man. Good times. Dude, you're the best. Yes. Let's do it. All right. Hey, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you guys want to learn more about the tools, tips, and tricks that I use on a daily basis to maintain my success, stay connected with me through all of my socials at I am Josh Galindo.